Um, so next, we're going to welcome up our uh, special headliner. Let me just do a proper introduction for her. Uh, so our special guest tonight is Special K. <laughs> Spoken word poet Kimberly Special K Johnson is joining us from Richmond, Virginia in the USA. She started performing in 2014, at first timidly stepping up to the mic on various Richmond stages, but by 2018, her performance arena included Washington, D.C., Maryland, and other places along the East Coast. In 2020, thanks to the poetry world going more virtual, Special K was able to share her love of poetry with audiences in New York, Georgia, California, and here in the UK as well. Writing under the name Kimberly J, she has authored a book, Journey to Forgiveness, and contributed to several anthologies, including the 2019 and 2020 Poetry Marathon anthologies. Uh, when Special K isn't captivating audiences with her unique form of word and word inspiration, she enjoys handcrafting greeting cards, reading, having a good time at the beach and in the pool, or on the farm with her horses. Fire and Dust regulars will be familiar with Kim's powerful words and voice, but whether it's your first time or a hundredth time hearing a performance by Special K, you can expect to be entertained and left wanting more. Let's give a big Fire and Dust welcome to Special K. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Hello, I am really bad about talking about myself and really bad about inter introducing poems. So I'm just gonna get right into it. Um, I will give a little tidbit about my second piece, uh, but I'm gonna celebrate some women today. So here we go. My mother told me someday I would buy galleys with good oars and sails to distant shores. They hid rice in the strands of plaits twisted together in my ancestors' hair. They did not know where they were going, but they made sure that they would always be able to find their way back home. Shackled bound together and beaten down. The white man tried to kill the spirit of my ancestors, but still I rise. My mother told me someday I would buy galleys with good oars and sails to distant shores. And as they boarded the boat, great big ships designed to transverse oceans, some of my ancestors decided they would rather die than kowtow bow to the white man who drinketh rum and telleth lies. And so they hurled themselves into the hectic swells of the Atlantic mist. The white man's hearty laugh could be heard over the mournful cries of my ancestors. Cockily, he said, my ancestors would not be missed. But the spirit of my ancestors does not lie at the bottom of the sea. The spirit of my ancestors is trans. It spans over the land. The spirit of my ancestors is free. My mother told me one day I would buy galleys with good oars and sails to distant shores. Arriving in the ports of foreign lands and faced with the challenges of not understanding the shouts of men who yelled and cursed, the spirit of my ancestors could not be crushed. For over 400 years, those boats did sail, each one filled with white men who capitalized on the fear and wails of my ancestors. Time and time again, they tried to kill the spirit of my ancestors, but still I rise. My mother told me Someday I would buy galleys with good oars and sails to distant 
shows. I am the rice patty sewn from the grains hidden in the strands of plaits twisted together in my ancestors' hair. And though the clarion call may have sounded for my oppressors to rise up, still will I rise. My mother told me someday I would buy Calibus good old and say a third day skin show. I am the spirit of my ancestors. The spirit of my ancestors is I. And I am my ancestors' wildest dreams. And I must survive. And I will succeed no matter how many foemen, how many foemen, how many foemen. Okay, so just a little bit background piece <laughs> on this piece right here. I was asked to pay, on, pay homage to a lady in the Black Panther movement, which was a big in the civil rights era in the 1970s. And this lady that this poem is about, um, she, along with 10 other people, were arrested in New York City in 1970 and charged with consp conspiring to blow the city up. However, it's not true. They were innocent. And this lady, they didn't have money to raise bail, but this lady, she wrote a letter and then she defended herself and she won her case. She also was able to convince a, con um, she was also able to have a white man who was an undercover cop admit that he was the one who had started the conspiracy. So. Eleanor Roosevelt said, a woman is a lot like a tea bag. You never know how strong she is until you put her in hot water. But what about when you put her in a jail cell? Is it possible to measure her strength in the length of cement brick? And when she advocates and fights for her freedom, is it still strength you perceive or is she just another angry black woman? And when darkness is broken only by the clanging of metal slamming into its place against metal and the taunts of bodies clothed in the uniform of gods, are you still able to see the strength within? Or have your eyes been veiled over and your ears deceived, conditioned to believe that the truths she sings are nothing more than the rants and raves of the clinically insane? Is it still strength in woman that you see or has she become inhuman? And when is it that you transition from worker B to open member of this inhumane society? Calm and collected. Her mind refuses to succumb to the chains you have hung. And so she knows she is free. Does that make you angry? See, no matter how many times you tell her she doesn't matter, she continues to deconstruct your lies brick by brick by brick. And she will stand in the face of your traditional and judicial benches, a constant reminder that she is more than just a woman. She is a woman phenomenally. And eventually you will be made to see that your corrupt systems will never be able to contain the essence and strength of woman, this woman. Eleanor Roosevelt said, you never know how strong she is until you put her in hot water. I say, she learned how to swim in hot water. Eleanor Roosevelt said, you never know how strong she is until you put her in hot water. I say, 
How do you take your tea? One lump or two? Eleanor Roosevelt said you never know how strong she is until you put her in hot water. I say she was born in hot water. Eleanor Roosevelt said you never know how strong she is until you put her in hot water. I say she has always known. Eleanor Roosevelt said you never know how strong she is until you put her in hot water. I say, ancestor, queen, Afeni Shakur, thank you for fearlessly forging a path for black women to follow in, for teaching us that it is okay to embody strength and be strong and we don't have to be labeled angry and for paving the way for black girls who face life every day, amen. Whew.